The Art of Betrayal. Judas lives in car dealer finance, and he's the one most car buyers think is just a simple banker who's ready to help you with a car loan. Hi, I'm Kevin Hunter, also known as The Homer Guy and author of Is That The Best You Can Do? Today's amazing video is brought to you by The Homer Guy Team, home of super high intensity training for car buyers and a very savvy group of auto experts to boot. To the disappointment of car dealer finance managers, we're gonna help you navigate through all the swagger, the expensive cologne, and the cash-making deal-saving closes you can expect to face in a dealer finance office. If you're thankful we're in the business of helping car buyers like you with the Homework Guy videos, and you want to support our efforts, there are plenty of ways for you to get on board and show us some appreciation. A disclaimer first, not every dealer finance man is out to get you. However, tons of guys like Judas live in car dealer finance offices, and guys like Judas are about to set you up for the big betrayal. I'll explain the betrayal in a moment, but first, I want to be clear about something I said in my opening statement. Far too many of you car buyers still think the finance officer is just a banker who's trying to get you a good loan and sign you out on your car. Not even close. So let's bust that myth right now. Do not assume the finance man is there to take care of you. His only job is to take care of the dealership and in turn to take care of himself. All he has to do is convince you that he is taking care of you, and then you're toast. That's when he'll betray you. The expectation of betrayal in the car business was first brought to my attention by a used car manager that I worked for at one point. As a salesman, I had a good customer coming in to see me, and it would be the third time she was going to buy a car from me in the last six months. So Tim called me from the tower and said, Kevin, your gal Dana is here to see you. Then he paused and added, just sell her a car this time, would you? You don't have to do any of that stuff you usually do with your other customers. She already trusts you. I went the extra mile for my customers, and for this reason, my customers trusted me. Tim knew that. So today, he was asking me to shortcut all of that, to betray Dana's trust. For a guy who claimed to offer sweet deals to everyone, asking me to betray the trust of my customer wasn't very sweet at all. If you understood that the dealer finance office is responsible for setting up car loans, well, that assumption is only partially accurate. I say this because the banking part of their job is little more than a cover story to all the real profit makers the dealer owner expects Judas to saddle you with. Think about the example of a florist who sells a few flowers out the front door, but sells a ton of stuff out the back door that nobody wants to talk about. With that picture in mind, you understand dealer finance better. Let me get on to illustrating the betrayal you can expect from Judas, the finance officer. Judas understands human psychology from top to bottom. It either came naturally or he's been taught it. He starts this process by adding to the common misperception that he's just a friendly banker who's there to help you get a car loan. He does this by instructing your car salesman to tell you that you'll be in amazing hands once you get back into his finance office. That's why you keep hearing that this guy has tons of banking connections to help you with. It's just the start of the betrayal. Today, you're going to see what the finance officer looks and sounds like. To be crystal clear, there's nothing wrong with any of the psychological techniques that I'll be sharing. I'm not condemning them at all. In fact, it's very savvy salesmanship and anyone wanting to survive in sales should do it. However, what's different about dealer finance and the point that I'm making is that you need to be aware that this guy is not a banker and he's a salesman and the entire dog and pony show from the meeting with the finance man to the entirety of his presentation is designed to disarm you. Disarmed? You think he really does have sweet deals and you like and respect the finance guy. You think of him as professional and you take his advice, then you trust him. When it's obvious he has made it to this stage, he betrays you with a bad deal, betrays the respect you gave him, the professionalism you expected, the advice you thought would be good, and yes, betrays your trust. Judas betrays all of this and empties your pockets. It's time to introduce you to Judas so you'll better understand why he so easily betrays you. He dresses professionally. He stands straight and tall. His handshake is firm. He has a warm smile on his face. He looks you in the eye and mutters, I love you, under his breath. Something he read in Og Mandino's book, The World's Greatest Salesman. Interestingly, saying I love you puts a look on his face that connects with your brain and a little voice inside your head says, 
I like this guy. This is what is known as the first impression and it means a lot to you. You'll ignore a lot of red flags when you have the right first impression. Next, you find out that this just isn't simple Judas or Fred, Bob, Hank, or Lucy. Oh no, finance officers have learned that to come off as more professional, they should always use their full name first and last with every customer they meet. That's the way they introduce themselves. Hi, I'm Judas Bundy, the finance officer. How are you guys today? Come on in. I've heard lots of good things about you from Ben. He's genuinely enthusiastic, glad to see you, and now you're in his office. In the car business, this is known as the box, the place the salesman promised you'd be out of in five minutes. Judas has a significant psychological advantage over you in the box. You want a car? You've sold yourself on the fact that you're getting a car? And you might have spent days over the email or on the phone or several of the last few hours beating the salesman to get the price you wanted. Judas is the last guy you have to see to get your car. You look around his office and you notice things Judas loves. There's his family, a picture that is displayed to pull at your heartstrings. You also see posters of his favorite band, perhaps some sports players, books he's reading or about to read, or perhaps never going to read but there to impress you. Music might be playing softly. Judas seems friendly, professional, easygoing, and most importantly, human. And you like that about him. At this point, you're relieved all the bad stuff is back there behind you. You sigh and let out a deep breath. As I said, you're in the box and Judas has a captive audience. After a little Q&A, out comes what is known as the menu. It's slick, computerized, and Judas has already put together some recommendations to help you. You need to protect your investment. And this is what 80% of my customers do. It's the right choice of words to sound like solid advice. The most customers phrase. But it's actually not good advice. He's right in that most people do buy his stuff. But it's not because it's the right thing to do. It's because most people don't do their homework and they get sucked into believing Judas. That's part of the betrayal. He betrays you with bad advice when you believed you'd be getting good advice. You decide to go with what most people do, and then Judas congratulates you, lowering his voice, brings you into that exclusive club. He's throwing some things in because he likes you. Good choice. You'll sleep easy at night with the deluxe package. And you know what? I'm going to go ahead and throw in the wheel and the tire coverage because you guys are such great customers, and I like you. He keeps gabbing with you while he's loading your deal full of fees and products. All things he'll explain are just more examples of him helping you. Now, excuse me for a moment while I make sure that all the details are exactly right. Some of the people here call me nitpicky, but I like to have every possibility nailed down. And I also wanna make sure you know that this dealership, your data here is very secure. We have great networks. That's not always true of some of the other dealers that I've had to work with. But I have to say it's like Fort Knox around here, and I, but I like that. And keeping customer information like yours is very important to me. And I'm assuming that it is to you too. You kind of like this. Now you don't have to be nitpicky because he's nitpicky. All of your details are secure. He's also going to make sure he doesn't miss any opportunities to help you. And you like that because buying a car is a little bit scary and gambling isn't your thing. Well, Judas has an unspoken personal policy not to exceed a four product limit. That's the stuff he's going to pack into your loan for you. It's a twisted sort of ethical boundary he either pledged not to cross or thinks he can't sell more than that. It's probably the second one because in reality, Judas hardly knows what ethics are. As expected, he does a masterful presentation of the menu. Now, with your deluxe package, I threw in the tire and the wheel coverage, just like I said earlier. And your expensive key fobs, hey, they're also covered as well. And that's for the lifetime of the car. So you don't have to worry about little Johnny spilling Coke on your seats or scratching your paint or brushing up against the car um, because, hey, I added in the uh, paint and the fabric protection. So you're good to go. If you have any questions, you just let me know. His attention immediately moves to the payment structure, avoiding any attempt you might have had at questions. Now, your total monthly payment for this car and for the addendums in the contract is $425.50 
at 72 months. But you also have 212.75 biweekly as an option. So if you do the biweekly payment plan, you'll have this paid off in just 66 months. But with uh, and then just a little tip to help you out saves you some money there. Now I'll just need your signatures right here. Uh, and give me, say, 15 minutes uh, just to get all the state and the financial paperwork together. And uh, hopefully that doesn't hurt your time goal for getting out of here in 15 minutes, okay? Now, great. I'll have you out of here in your new car and home in time for dinner. If you aren't ready for all of this dog and pony show, you might have thought about what you'd want to say, but you just never said it. Isn't this optional? I'm not paying these fees. The payments are just too high. No. I don't want any of this stuff. I never buy warranties. This is a reliable car, isn't it? But you know, it didn't matter anyway. Judas was ready for any of it. This isn't his first rodeo. He sees hundreds of customers a month, and he also rehearses. On top of that, he reads books like this one, 76 Cash Making Deal Saving Closes. Did you even know this kind of stuff was published to help finance officers beat you? With help from books and trainers like this, Judas has lines ready for customers who resist. Lines that are known as emotional deposits and problem solvers that sound something like this. In your shoes, I'd feel exactly the same way. I know what's get it going on here, and I get it. Yeah, let me guess, you bought one of these things before and it, it didn't cover anything. Some dealers out there are just so shady. No problem at all. A lot of my customers say that. Why do you say that? You have your own mechanic? Maybe you're right. Maybe this coverage isn't right for you. Let's see if we can customize it to your driving habits. And I know what you're saying. I thought the same thing one time, but here's what I found out. And you owe it to yourself to consider at least going with this. Thanks for bringing that up. Look at it this way. Take that number and multiply it by. I see. Are you planning to keep the car for the length of the loan? You know the feeling you get from being protected. That feeling will pretty much guarantee that you'll only be buying from us next time too. Which position do you prefer to be in? Making a decision because you want to or making a decision because you have to? Peace of mind. That's what I'm talking about. Good old peace of mind. Do you see how easily the betrayal happens? The first impression, the professionalism, the respect and trust. You get sucked into throwing caution to the wind because betraying you, well, that is an art. Aren't you glad I've studied this stuff up so you don't have to? There's a ton to digest. The stuff I shared today is just a short list of comments and questions Judas has rehearsed and trained to beat you with. Are you prepared to try memorize your own questions or comments or comebacks? Or have you finally realized that you probably can't come out on top of this game of betrayal? I hope this video today has helped to convince you that negotiating in dealer finance is only a tactic that should be attempted by the more skilled car buyers. The good news is you don't have to. We recommend that you handle as much of this offsite as possible via email or by phone or texting. Contact an internet manager or chat with the business development center at the dealership. If you have to visit the dealership, well, consider contacting the fleet manager. They're often much more low key and easy to talk to. There are many routes that are simpler, less risk to you, and keep you out of the crosshairs of guys like Judas. Guys who are so skilled at what they do that many of you failed to pass his game of betrayal with a win. Well, now, if you're one of those brave souls and you think you want to try dealing with the finance office, see our video, 11 Fake Fees with the Role Play in it, where the customer does an absolutely skillful job of shutting down the finance man. And by the end, he didn't know what the heck to say, and she got exactly what she wanted. If you can be as firm and focused as this customer was, you'll come out smelling like a rose. Best of luck to you if you decide to go that route. Now, if you appreciate the video today, Consider giving us that great big thumbs up and leave a comment down below. Include hashtag the homework guy and make sure to join us on Facebook and Twitter and many of our other social media sites. We post notifications and other updates on those sites and answer car buying questions there too. If you love what we do and want to contribute with a tip, 
Well, the PayPal and Cash App links that you see here will be easy to find in the description box down below or on our website. Here's the best part. We don't just help car buyers. We use our tips to help a great friend of ours, Maggie. This amazing young lady is making a huge difference in the lives of university students. We enthusiastically sponsor her mission, and Maggie thanks you in advance. Just like the Homework Guy channel, Maggie knows that you change the world by what you do. If you can't do a tip today, no problem. Just help us get the word out. The Homework Guy team loves it when you share our videos with your family and friends and encourage others to subscribe to the channel. As our following grows, each and every one of you are playing a role in helping to defeat the dishonest operators in the car business. They're still struggling to figure out that fairness and honesty is the best business model. Imagine that. Thanks, everyone, for coming back. We'll see you on our next video. You guys rock. I'm Kevin Hunter. Until next time, take care, everyone. So we talked about this a little bit, putting this video together here, Glenn. And how did going through this stuff and present it, how did it make you feel? Well, Kevin, I have to tell you, and I have to tell the listeners out there, too, I, I did not feel comfortable <laughs> saying any of these things on camera because they're just so slimy. Yes. And I was like, I don't even want a video of me saying something like that out there. Uh, but, you know, it's worth it because if we can, listen, we can save you guys money and save you the uh, possibility you get ripped off from uh, slimy sales tactics like this. It's worth it. Well, you know, what's interesting is when you mentioned the slimy tactics, um, I went into the car business to learn this industry. And I was only in the training for a couple of days and I felt like I'd been spit on by camels or whatever. I mean, I just came home feeling like filthy and, <laughs> and, and I wanted to quit. I was like, I, you know, I'm not going to do this. And yeah. my wife was saying, why did you do this? And I did it because I thought I would actually be on a myth busting mission. I didn't think there was any possibility that the, that the car business could be so bad as car buyers thought it was. And then I found out it was worse. Yeah. Like the, 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 <laughs> yeah, the yeah, trading, yeah. Yeah, the trading yeah. they put you through, like it's not an accident. It was all on purpose. Right. And then just a few of the things that other salesmen would tell me, they're like, you're not going to ever cut it here because, you know, you're just trying to be too nice to people. Right. It's like, really? <laughs> or honest. A, yeah. honest. I mean, that's the thing. There's nothing worse than being honest if you're out there uh, in sales like that. So Yeah. So it was, it was this really slimy process that I kind of felt I was going through and yet, I knew I had to do it because I wanted to help people like this who are out in our audience. Well, I'll tell you what, I mean, people should be pretty thankful that you're willing to do this. And mm -hmm. uh, even if you have to rope in your friends to come in and yeah. <laughs> fill slimy salesperson roles like this. But I think it's important and it's worth it if we can save people money. And hopefully, uh, and I'm sure that that's what's happening out there right now. So uh, thank you for what you're doing. And uh, I'm always happy to help because of that. Peace of mind. That's, that's right. what I'm talking about. <laughs> that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. Thanks, everyone, for joining us.